Hey friends, it's me Patrick God. Thank you so much for dropping by. I create web development tutorials here on this channel. I think you already know that. And today we will cover Google authentication with ASP.NET Core identity or .NET identity, in essence, the identity framework, and then probably also identity server, you name it, identity stuff, Google authentication with a web API in .NET 6 and also this whole stuff in a Blazor WebAssembly application. So this is what we're going to do today. It's really not much actually, but it can be a pain in the ass. Sorry about that when you try to create an application or a project in the Google console. But maybe with this tutorial now you will know how this works and finally you will be able to use Google authentication within your application. All right, so this is what we're going to do today. And I am really proud to tell you that this video now is sponsored by Skillshare. I'm pretty sure you already know what Skillshare is, but if not, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills like programming, for instance, or web development. So invest in yourself and your personal growth. Have a specific skill you're trying to learn, then Skillshare is the perfect place to start from not only programming but also for instance photography illustration to graphic design freelancing productivity and more you can find classes that will match your goals and interests like for instance the youtube class from marcus brownlee this is what i like really because i'm well doing youtube of course or what i also really love are the productivity classes of ali abdal and thomas frank so maybe you also want to have a look and of course you can also get my course on skillshare about authentication and authorization with dotnet 6 here we cover json web tokens roles and refresh tokens Tokens, so maybe you want to have a look and the best thing is the first thousand people who use the link in the video description get one month free of Skillshare so a one month free trial of Skillshare if you use the link in the video description I don't know what you're waiting for so just pause the video or just go right there to the video description or the pinned comment and click on this link join the community and then watch my tutorial on Skillshare and then maybe come back and watch this YouTube tutorial Tutorial. All right. Thank you very much for that. And now if you also like this video here and learn something, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and maybe even subscribe to my channel. It does make a difference. Thank you so much for that. Don't forget to also check out my newsletter for these videos here earlier in your inbox and a couple of more .NET related stuff. And the last thing I forgot my coffee cup. It is downstairs in the kitchen. Thank you so much everyone for your support. I love you forever, guys. It does mean a lot to me. Thank you so, 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 so much. And now I stop talking. Enjoy the Google authentication tutorial. All right, let's create a new project with Visual Studio 2022. It is going to be a Blazor web assembly application. Uh, why is that? Well, I want to have the Blazor client and the web API with the identity stuff in the server project and then also share project for the models, but I think we won't need the models in this case. Now the name Blazor Google Auth tutorial, awesome name. And now we need .NET 6, configure H4 HTTPS, ASP.NET Core hosted. So we get the server project. And now very important, individual accounts. So we are using the identity framework. And I created one tutorial about identity already. So please have a look on my channel or check out the info card or the links in the video description or in the pinned comment. You will find the links somewhere on my channel you will find this tutorial and there I um well I also take the steps we take here together but here I will just rush through them because I really want to focus on the Google stuff so what we have here now is our client project the server project and the shared project client is just blazer stuff server now is the web api also with identity so as you can see here we've already have a data context right so this is the uh, entity, entity framework as, uh, yeah, way to uh, get access to the database. We have our user model already. And when we have a look at the actual identity model, you see that there's lots of stuff, actually, lots of properties, no, not just a, a username and a password. We've got the username, we've got the email, email confirmed. Well, really lots of stuff, right? So you might get overwhelmed by the, the identity things here 
if you're trying this for the very first time. I was definitely, but it isn't that bad really. We just have to take some steps. As you can see here, there is one migration for us already. And when we would run this migration, we will create some tables, ASP.NET roles, ASP.NET users, device codes, and so on. So again, lots and lots of maybe overwhelming stuff, but don't worry, we will well, not go through everything. We will just have a look at the most important stuff. And this is this table here, create table ASP.NET users. Now to apply the migration, first let's have a look at the connection, connection string here of the database. You see that this default template is, well, it wants a, a local database here. And when we run this real quick, we see that this database, of course, is not there yet. So if you try to register for an account with or with an account, then uh, we will get an error. Let's see, take some time today. If you try to log in, not working. And when we try to register, for instance, Tony at start.com with this password here, we see, whoops, database does not exist with this crazy name. So we can go back and let me, let me just stop this again and close this. Now what I wanna do is I wanna use a SQL Server Express database. I've already got the Management Studio open here. Again, if you're not familiar with this, with this stuff, maybe first have a look at the, at the other tutorial or if you are familiar with that, just check out the time codes and then skip through this first chapter. And um, if you still need then SQL Server Express, please just Google for SQL Server, download SQL Server. And so let me just, just, just let me show you this SQL Server. There is this thing. So SQL Server downloads, go to download here, Express or the developer version should also work totally free. Download now and regarding SQL Server Management Studio. That's this thing here, right? So you can download this as well. There's the link. And then you should get this application here and we will create a new database. This is not the database. This is a database of my uh, .NET Jumpstart course. But apart from that, let's first change the connection string. So it's installed locally. So local host, then SQL Express database, of course, well, you can leave this name, totally up to you. Let me change that to Google Auth DB, for instance, just for this test here, don't need this thing. And that's it. So localhost SQL Express, semicolon database, Google Auth DB, and that's pretty much it. And now to run the migration, we also need the EF core tools. And for that we enter .NET, tool install dash dash global and then .NET dash EF telling me it's already installed. So what I can do is either choose uninstall, right? So uninstall for instance, or, and then install it again, or simply update. And with that, I get the latest version and with .NET EF, I can double check. Yep, installed now. And now you see it here, we've got three commands available and the command we need now is .NET EF database update. And with update, it will also create the database, but it's good that this error happened here. No project was found. Well, why is that? We have to go to the server directory here. So Blazor, Google, and so on. And then the server, almost server directory. Let's get some room here. And now let's try that again and hopefully it will create our database. Yeah, you see lots and lots of stuff is executed here. Create table, create table, and so on. When we now go to the SQL Server Management Studio, refresh the databases, here it is. Nice, right? Now you see lots and lots of tables, but the most interesting one for us is this thing here, ASP.NET users. It is currently empty, but let's just register an account and uh, start the app for that. Again, there it is. And now we should see that 
logging in should now work, right? And register also. So let's try that again with Tony at start.com. Password register worked, right? So now in the database, right click execute SQL. We see this guy, but the email is not confirmed. So we cannot log in yet, but we can do this when we click here to confirm the account. And now it is confirmed. And when we try to log in now, we see that when you enter the correct password, yep, this should work now. And we see hello, Tony at stark.com. Isn't that nice? Here's our profile. We can change all that stuff and we can also log out. All right. And now it's getting interesting, right? So again, when we hit register, you see this stuff here. By the way, this is now the page you see here. This is not Blazor anymore. This is a Razor page, a CSHTML file. And if you want to change this file, you have to scaffold the identity files. And I did this in the other already mentioned tutorial. So please have a look there if you want to change all that stuff. But now let's focus on Google authentication. And you see it here already, use another service to register. There's an article apparently in the documentations. So let's have a look there. Facebook, Google and so on. Yeah, that's exactly what we need. And so let's try it with Google authentication. And now this might be overwhelming when you're trying this by yourself. Was for me as well. <laughs> so yeah, we have to dive deep and this is really pain in the ass. Sorry about that, but adding a project and an app and so on, entering all that stuff, crazy. But it does work in the end, hopefully also in this tutorial, but let's see. So let's just go through this together. First, integrating Google sign in into your web app. Let me open this in an incognito window so we can choose another account. And here it says, go to the credentials page. Create, create credentials, OAuth, client ID, and so on. So let's just try that. And well, first log in with your account. All right, I am here now because I already created a project, but let me, let me just go through this with you together now. So let's create a new project. And we call this now crazy identity Google authentication project. Nice. This is the ID. Why not? Let's create this. Okay. 30 characters only. So it should be maybe crazy identity Google auth project. All right. So we did that. Got our project now. Didn't mention that here, right? Not sure about that, but still we need a project and now create credentials or auth client ID. All right. So create credentials again, make sure, well, that's, this is the wrong project. Let's, Change that crazy identity Google auth project. Nice. Create credentials OAuth client ID. This is the one. Okay. And now it says to create an OAuth client ID, you must first configure your consent screen, configure consent screen. And this is exactly what they are telling us in the documentation. Let me open this um, here as well. So I don't have to switch the, the windows here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, auth concert screen, right? So we have to go there as well. Let's find first configure consent screen. Yep. This is the one. And now we have to pay attention. We choose external and create. All right. Okay. And now it says app information, the app name, support email, lots and lots of stuff. So maybe we can just enter app name is now my crazy Google auth identity app. Can we actually, yeah, of course, auth identity app. Nice. Email address. All right. App logo and now app domain application homepage. Do we need this? I don't think so. This is then mail at patrickgod.com. Save and continue. All right, this worked. That's nice. So maybe you have to stop the video and 
just try things out until it works. And now what's telling us? Scopes, test users. All right, so I think we can just save and continue here. Not sure about adding test users if you want to. Testing only test users are able to access the app. All right. Okay, so now we should see type is external. This is the crazy name, contact email address, and so on. And the test user. All right, now back to the dashboard. What are the next steps? In the credentials tab of the application dashboard, select create credentials. All right, so now this should actually work, right? So this was one step too early. So we can now say OAuth client ID. Application type is a web application in our case. Well, we have named the project, right? So let's choose the name Blazor Google Auth Tutorial. And now the next step is we have to add an authorized redirect URI. And this is really important. See it here. It's HTTPS localhost, the port for local development, of course, and sign in Google. Now, how do we get the port? Well, we uh, opened the app already here. So you see the actual URL 7042. But of course, we can also have a look here in the server project then in the properties and the launch settings json here we see this url https localhost 7042 so let's copy this and then add this here and also sign in google all right see it here as well sign in google now that's important and this is identity stuff. So we add this thing and now we hit create. All right, and we get our client secret and we get our client ID. You see, you can download the JSON file so you won't lose it. And now we have to enter these IDs or the client ID and the client secret in our application. As you see it here, right? So store the Google client ID and secret. Here, maybe just a side note when deploying the site, either update the app's redirect URI in the Google console or create a new Google API registration for production app. Well, right, if you, if you deploy your application, of course, you have to do some more stuff, but this is just for learning purposes here, this tutorial, so that you will see how this actually works. Now, storing the Google client and secret. First, we need this package here, Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication Google. So let's open this link. And here we just, let's use the .NET CLI. Copy this stuff, go back here and stop the application. So we just stop this. And then here we enter .NET add package, Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication Google. All right, done with that. And now to configure this, we go to the program CS of the server project. And you see here, I don't know why the syntax highlighting is not really working. What the heck is going on here? App is closed, let's try that again. Yep, now it's here, all right. We see builder services, add identity server, add API authorization, this is important. And after that, we see builder services, add authentication, and then add identity server JWT, adds an authentication handler for an API that coexists with an authorization server. Okay, that's nice. And here now we wanna add our Google authentication. So back to this little documentation here. And in the code, I know I, yeah, I um, skipped this, but just for a second, we'll get back to that. In a minute, you see it here. We've got our builder and then services, add authentication. This thing here, we can really copy this. So period and then add Google. Yeah, I'm lazy, so I'm copying this stuff. So this should be it. And also here you see it here, the configuration does not exist here. You have to use the builder configuration and here as well, builder configuration. All right, and now, 
this stuff here, the client ID and the client secret. There are different ways to, to, to use them or to store them. You could actually just enter your client here, right? Your client ID and the secret as well. For this tutorial, this would totally work. The other option is um, the app settings JSON file. We could just add another section here, similar to the connection strings. Put the client ID and the client secret there as well. Or as the, the documentation suggests, we can use the uh, user secrets. So the secret storage, and it says it here, the secret with the secret manager, you first have to enable the secret storage. So what you can do is for instance, .NET user secrets in it. So let's try that. Already initialized, nice. Okay, so when that is done, please have a look here if it's not in your case, but when this is done, then we can just run these commands here. And again, I hope this, if, if you've got any problems with this secrets manager, then please just try it with entering the, the client ID and the client secret direct, directly here. It is really, really, really annoying when, when this is just, when you have to stop because of of the of the secrets manager really trust me i know what i'm talking about so this really you want this success moment right you want that feeling of seeing the google authentication work with your application so don't worry about the the user secrets you can do this afterwards but now let's try it with this user secret stuff so we set authentication colon google colon client id to the client id so let's have a quick look again where is it? Here it is. So this is our client ID. Copy and paste. Successfully saved. And now the other one. Let me close this. This now would be this command. Enter it here and we copy this thing. All right, hit return. And that's it. So we can click OK here. Should be done. This is also what we already did. And now we should already be able to sign in with Google. So let's run the application. I think it's already open, right? Yeah, you see this here, but let me use the uh, other window. There it is. So let's go here. And this is now new, right? You see this cute little Google icon, fantastic design, I know. And now we can just click here. And we've got a redirect URI mismatch. All right. I'm pretty sure you already saw that. It's good that this is happening, right? Because with that, you now see what what's going on if you configure the, your app with a wrong redirect URI. So let's have a look again. There it is. And uh, yeah, sign in dash Google. Let's save that. And let's try that one more time. And now this works. You see that my crazy Google auth identity app. We see our account. Let's use this account. And you've successfully authenticated with Google. Please enter an email address for this site below and click the register button to finish logging in. So now let's use something else like peter at parker.com. For instance, we register, we can confirm this thing. And now ha let's have a look at uh, the database again. Refresh. We see our new email, right? See that password hash is null because this is our Google account now. And now here in ASP.NET user logins, we also see a new entry. The login provider is Google, provider displayed and so on. And this is important now, the user ID. You see it here, it starts with A17. And when we go back to the ASP.NET users table, again, A17. So these are really connected now. And now let's try to log in with this account again. And it worked, right? I was already uh, logged in with Google here in this session. And so now I can 
well, log in with Google in essence and don't have to enter a password. And this is pretty much everything. As always, I will push this to GitHub and then you can check out the code. But the most important thing really is this thing here, right? Configuring an, a project and an application in the Google console and uh, getting the uh, client ID and the client secret and then Hopefully this should work. All right, that is it. Google authentication together with identity, web API, even a secret server express database and Blazor. So this is how this is done. This is how this is done. Great English again, Patrick. I hope you liked the video and you learned something. If so, please give me a thumbs up. It would mean the world to me if you even subscribe to my channel and even click the bell icon to get a notification for new videos here on my channel. Thank you so much for that. Maybe you also want to check out my newsletter for these videos earlier in your inbox and upcoming .NET 6 stuff. For instance, the .NET Web Developer Bootcamp. If you want to get early access to that stuff, then the newsletter is definitely something you should have a look at. And the last thing, again, thank you so much for all your support, guys. I love you forever for all your coffees, teas, hot chocolates, orange juices. I really appreciate it. I love you guys forever. Thank you so, 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 so much. And now if you want to see more .NET stuff, then maybe, maybe you just hang around a little with me. Maybe we can get to know each other a bit more and uh, you just have a look at the videos here on the side. Binge watch all my videos. Then you might know a lot more about .NET and Blazor and uh, maybe know also a bit of Angular. So if this is something for you, check out all these videos. Thank you so much for watching again. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope I see you next time. Take care.